everyone and welcome to the Back to Blighty podcast. My name is Becky and I am joining you from the south coast of the UK where I live with my partner and our nine month old house rabbit called Harvey. Um, I hope you're all doing really well. There have been a few new subscribers recently um, since Vlogtober. Um, thank you for all your lovely comments. I didn't get round to answering many of them. I hope that I answer some of your questions actually on the vlog but with work and also the animal drama which I will go into very very slightly in a moment. Um, it was just yeah almost impossible for me to juggle everything so but please know that I did read every single one and it was really lovely to hear from you so thank you for that. Um, at the moment we are looking after my dad's little dog Flossie um, who is a working Cocker Spaniel and unfortunately at the end of October she had an accident, she was hit by a car and she had to have a plate fitted in her leg. So we are taking care of her for my dad at the moment and Harvey and her seem to be getting on very, very well. Um, I do feel a little bit sad for her because she has to be in a crate for six to eight weeks while she heals, um, but we're getting her out for some strokes and obviously going in the garden just to go to the loo and things like that. But um, she's doing really well, she's much happier. And uh, my dad came over to visit her on Friday and he's gonna be popping in again tomorrow as well so there's some visits going on which is really nice. What with that and Harvey being a bit poorly at the beginning of the month of October was very kind of pet heavy shall we say um, but hopefully all the animal shenanigans are behind us now and we can kind of get back to a bit of normality. So I thought I should do a podcast because it's November and obviously Vlogtober no, Vlogmas is coming up very soon and I will probably be doing Vlogmas um, because I just, I do really enjoy it. It's a lot of work, um, but I do enjoy it and yeah, it's kind of a, a nice thing to do this time of year when it's a bit gloomy and rainy and dark. So um, yeah, anyway, you haven't come over here to listen to me wittering on about Vlogmas. Um, I hope you've come here to see some of my knitting. So I have got a huge pile here. I'm not going to talk about spinning or weaving or crochet today, but I thought I would take you through every single whip. I had a bit of an organisation session yesterday, so things are now in different bags, so I have no clue what's where. But I've piled them all up and I will talk to you about my finished objects, my works in progress, I've got some acquisitions I'd like to talk to you about and also some books that I've been reading. So, um, so I think we'll get stuck in. My first finished object is my Alison Cardigan, which is a pattern by Hannah Fettig. And i um, got it here. And I made this out of John Arburn, Jana Delic in their Le Fleur colourway, which is this gorgeous purpley heather colour. Just love it. And the inside of the pockets, I used woman in blue. Um, so it's a kind of oversized cardigan and I love it. So I think the last podcast I did, I was talking about finishing the neckband, which I have the ribbing around here, which I have. And uh, yeah, I shall stand up, give you a little look. It doesn't go with what I'm wearing. Um, but you can kind of see where I'm going with it. So yeah got lovely longish sleeves because I like to cosy up in the winter and yeah it's a lovely layering piece I'm really really pleased with it it's a very simple pattern I'd never done pockets before um, and they were really simple would I do pockets again I'm not sure I would actually because I don't use them so um, yeah but a really nice pattern really lovely yarn um, it's not doing too badly peel wise I've worn it a lot so Yarnadelic is Corridale and Corridale is a long staple which means that you get this lovely drape with it um, but it can peel a bit um, but I don't mind peeling um, I would prefer that I prefer a natural yarn and if I have to shave it once in a while that's fine with me so yeah that's my first finished object oh, I'm just going to wrestle out of it and I'm going to kind of throw it down there okay because I'm running out of room. So what next? I also finished a pair of socks for my lovely dad. 
Um, I haven't got them with me because he's already wearing them and he loves them. He's a, a convert, he loves the knitted socks so I might have to knit him another pair. Um, but I finished the Curio socks by Andrew Mowry and I used West Yorkshire spinners in Pacific with a Zalba ball um, and they turned out really well. It's my first toe up sock. Would I do it again? I do prefer a cuff down um, purely because I haven't yet found the perfect cast off for me for the ribbing. Um, so they fluted out a little bit on those socks, which is fine for my dad because he's quite wide in the ankle. Um, he broke his ankle. Um, we were quite young um, and it's kind of never been quite the same so he needs them a little bit wider anyway at the top but yeah it looks fine when it's on but when it's off it kind of flutes out a bit at the top so I need to find the perfect cast off but at the moment I'm back to my usual cuff down. So I got those finished. Um, the other pair of socks that I finished were a pair of socks by Nancy Wheeler. These are the Swiss Stop Shorty socks and I love them. They've got these lovely little dots here which are like the Swiss Stop fabric which I love Swiss Stop fabric. Um, so when I saw these I was like I'm gonna have to do them. So yeah they're called the Swiss Stop Shorty socks but mine aren't so short. I made mine a little bit longer and I used Coop Knit Socks Yeah in the Dan Bright, which is the light grey, and then I used the Zalba Ball and I used on the Curio Socks to make the stripes, which I think look really cool. I'm definitely going to do that again with the Zalba Ball, um, but I really like them, looking forward to wearing them. And uh, the Socks Yeah um, was really nice too, really nice to work with. Um, yeah, I don't think I've got anything more to say about them. Exactly the same as what the pattern told me to do. Um, yeah, very happy. So great pattern. And also, Nancy's got a great podcast. So nip, sip, knit, sip, happy. I'm sure she's done that because it's a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> I will pop that down below. So if you haven't seen Nancy's podcast, please go and have a look. Because um, it's an absolute delight. Okay. We're racing through, this is great, but I'm going to have to rummage because the pile might have to stop throwing things on the floor in a minute. So the other thing that I did uh, during Vlogtober was I knitted up a cowl and this is one that I've kind of, I won't say designed, because <laughs> that sounds far grander than what this actually is. So what I did is I wanted a cow and I used my white face woodland fibre that I spun up and showed you last time. So I'm coming for a bit of a closer look. It's blowing out a little bit, um, but yeah. Now it doesn't look much when it's off, but when it's on, I think it looks fab. So I wanted a cow that would cover my shoulders um, so let's just sort myself out. So yeah, so I wanted it so that it would lay really nicely, like a proper collar. Um, so it's nice because I can pull this up if it's a bit of a chilly day, um, but also I can fold it down if I just want something around my neck. And it is so warm and it is so lovely. I am very, very happy with this project. Um, I can't even remember what I did. Uh, let's have a look. So I did I think it was three by three rib. I <laughs> honestly don't know and I haven't got my glasses on so yeah and now the hair's looking a bit dodgy. But yeah really pleased with this. It's really light. Um, it's quite rustic but it's definitely not itchy um, and it's so warm. So yeah, I'm going to wear this a lot and I've got a lot of things that are this colour. I've got a tartan, uh, blue and green tartan dress that it just looks gorgeous with and it really keeps me warm. So, um, so that's that. And then the last thing, I was asked by my lovely friend Sally if I would knit a pair of socks for her partner Sean. And she was quite specific <laughs> in what she wanted because he likes some football team. 
I can't remember who, and if I say a football team, it's probably going to be the wrong colours. He likes a football team, and she wanted some socks for him um, in those colours, which are red and white. And because Sally is my best friend, and because I love her, I said yes. But never again, um, <laughs> because I had knit for Sally. But these socks took me forever. They are just red and white and he's got big feet. I mean, they just took <laughs> forever. So I'm calling this a finished object, but all I've got to do is Kitchener that, so stitch that up, um, and then you'll have two, two socks, a pair of socks. So yeah, so Sean, they're done. So stop nagging me, they're done. <laughs> um, so I will stitch those up and then I will get them off to Sally and Sean. Um, yeah, I think it's because they had to be red and white and it was just, yeah, it was just a bit boring, I'm not gonna lie. But because I love her, I did it. So aren't I a good friend? So that's those done. Um, that is it for my finished object. So now we're on whips um, and I have done loads, loads of knitting, loads and loads of knitting. So considering my October was completely kind of flat out, um, I did get some knitting done. And since obviously I've had Flossie here, I've had to be in a bit more. So I've, you know, got my needles out. And I have been doing my Yule sweater, which is a pattern by Susan Crawford. It's in her Vintage Shetland Project book, which Jack got me three years ago. Um, and I just fell in love with this jumper then and wanted to knit it. So it's a full colour work sweater and it is knit out of Jameson Smith two ply jumper weight yarn. And um, these are the colours that are in the pattern. And I have finished one sleeve and I have started the other sleeve so it's just going to be absolutely glorious it is a cropped jumper but this just brings me so much joy and I just find colour work really kind of relaxing I think it's the counting kind of really kind of grounds me um, but yeah, this could be a Christmas jumper, if not January, <laughs> but we'll see. I mean, I've, I've kind of got myself distracted again by some other things, but um, yeah, I'm really loving it. There is a little bit of an error in the pattern for my size. So I went for size two and you kind of follow the chart up and down. And so, so for instance, one minute you go, up the graph and then you change and then you come down again and it would have worked out that I would have had two red stripes together if I'd have done that. Um, I had a look on Ravelry and some other people had found the same thing so I just kind of had a look and winged it a little bit um, and it's all worked out fine and I've taken some notes so I know what to do on the other side but yeah oh this with dungarees over the top in winter is just going to be so wonderful. So yeah, so that's coming on really, really well. Um, and I've got not that much yarn left over. I've got sort of under a ball of each, but I did buy um, a cone of the grey because it worked out cheaper for me to buy a cone at the time than it did to buy the balls. So I've still got all this left um, and it's just, Lovely, I love Jameson Smith yarn. Um, it's 100% Shetland. It's obviously made and spun in the UK, which is really good. And, well, good for me. Um, so, yeah, right, let's, now sitting on balls of yarn. The other thing is I've got so many ends to weave in. I have been weaving them in a bit as I go, but yeah, there's still loads to do. So I keep trying to do a bit every now and then. So that's my Yule sweater. What else have I got? I started another pair of socks and I bought this um, yarn during 
Vlogtober and I just couldn't wait to knit with it. So this is uh, Wool is the Answer. Again, it's blowing out a bit. It's it's actually a bit darker than that. It's kind of, yeah, it is. It's just darker. <laughs> I'll just take my word for it. Um, and this is from Wood is the Answer and it is Highland Heather and it is 70% Superwash Merino, 20% Yak and 10% Nylon. And I've never knit with Yak before, but it is so soft. Um, so I shall be interested to see how this wears. I am knitting the London Nightwalk socks by Rachel Fletcher. Uh, Rachel is one half of the Twin Set and Pearl podcast. Um, they have a lovely po podcast, I will link that down below as well. And I've got this far. I'm going to put it on my wrist because it kind of scooches in um, because it's a kind of twisted rib affair. So, oh. so this is what it's looking like. It's got this lovely, lovely detail. It is so blowing out. Um, it looks really stripy in the in the camera but it's not it's kind of um it's nice and dark so i'm really enjoying them they take a bit of focus because i need to watch what i'm doing because obviously you're twisting stitches all the time um but i'm really enjoying them um, and i think they're going to be a really nice pair of socks i've actually downloaded quite a few patterns i love their bridgerton sock patterns um so I might cast on one of those after I've finished. So that's coming on really well. Go that over there. Um, okay, I've now got yarn in my mouth. So the next thing I cast on was a bit of a whim. And basically I was knitting a jumper, I can't remember what it was, um, out of some Let Low Pee. So it's this dark blue, let low pee. Yeah, it's definitely darker than that. Um, and this is in the colour where I'm going to need my glasses to see this. This is in the colour 9419. Um, and I love let low pee yarn. And I was making a jumper. And I'd actually got quite far. It was a bottom up colour work yoke jumper. And it, I'd got quite far because I'd knit not one but two sleeves for my jumper. I hadn't finished knitting them, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, so I'd done two sleeves, but I wasn't loving how they were looking. But I do like the yarn, and I was thinking about what could I use this yarn for? So I have cast on another project, and this is that over there. Uh, the Lana Vest by Irene Lynn, um, which I've had my eye on for ages and ages because it is just gorgeous. And it's a kind of like a vest tank top um, with cabling and a v-neck and it's quite oversized. I shall pop a picture in so you can see it. And I have done this much. So let me stand up and show you because the light's going to shine through it. So this is what it's looking like. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, the weave is quite open as you can see, but once it's on, you're not gonna see this. So this is the back. I've done the short rows, which scooches up the shoulders. Scooches is the word of the podcast today, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, so it will sit really nicely. So it's oversized. Um, it has got some ribbing on the armholes, but I love this. I love this. And as I say, I've got a couple of dresses that are dark blue or have dark blue in them. So this is going to be absolutely lovely. Um, there you, go. you can see the cabling going up there. But I am loving this. I started this not last night, night before, and I've done loads already. Um, I am using the same needles recommended in the pattern, which are 5.5s. And yeah, it's working out great so far. I'm probably going to crop it. So in the picture, it's quite long. But because I want to wear it with dresses, I think I'm going to miss a couple of the repeats off um, and have it a bit shorter. So yeah, so that's going well. And that's living in one of my favourite bags. This is my... Um, 
Elderman Craft Bag with all the veggies on it. Um, haven't been able to do much down the allotment. We've done a lot of clearing already, um, but because of the weather and also in the storm, I was really worried that I might lose my polytunnel, but we obviously dug it in really well because it's still there, which is great. Okay, so there were a couple of other things that I found. Um, one of them is my Scotch Broom by Wool and Pine, which I haven't done any more of, but I am liking it and I am going to continue with it, but it's going to sort of go on hold for a little bit. So this is my Scotch Broom, which is coming along really nicely. Um, it's going to be lovely in the spring. But at the moment I'm working on the, the more woolly in it, so um, yeah, that's on hold for a little while. But I thought I would sort of air all of my whips with you, my knitting whips anyway. Um, so that's in a bag. And then I kind of got a finished object. I've got a swatch. <laughs> so I am thinking of, well, I think I definitely am. I'm going to make the Eclair Pullover by Laura Penrose. Um, and again, I will pop uh, picture in here. Now there's two options, you can either do bobbles or no bobbles. I'm not a big bobble fan so I'm going to go no bobbles. So I finished a swatch so can I class this finished object? So here's my swatch and honestly this yarn is just fantastic. Now this is the yarn that Laura does recommend in her pattern. So it is Peruvian Ficolana. There we go. Again, it's darker. You get the gist. Everything's a bit darker. And the colourway, let me just get my glasses back on, is 832. But it is just absolutely gorgeous. Love that colour. So I have literally finished the swatch which I finished some time ago. Again, I think I talked about that a little bit in Vlogtober. And this is what I've done. I have cast on, <laughs> put some stitch markers in, and that's it. So yeah, so this is going to get on the needle soon. When, I'm not sure, but it definitely is. Because it's gonna be a lovely winter jumper. And I, another Elder McCraft by my lovely friend Emma. Elderman craft bag. Okay, so what's in this last bag? Ah, now this is one I would like to get finished because I was knitting on these, I think, last Vlogmas. Um, and I just forgot about them and haven't finished them. Let me put one on a sock blocker. It's a pair of socks, which you would think would be fairly quick to do. However, they are all over colour work socks. Um, I think my uh, bunny blockers need a bit of a oil or something. They're catching a little bit. Okay, so these are the Promises to Keep socks by Nitty Melissa. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, and they are just stunning. They're just so lovely. Yeah, and I am using West Yorkshire spinners. Um, I don't know if I've got the labels in here at all. Let's have a look, see. Uh, in Cobalt, Marshmallow, and the red one, I think it was KN, something like that. Um, and I've already started the second sock here, but that's as far as I've got. But these are just the wooliest, coziest socks. Um, and I just think they're amazing. And they're very Christmassy. So I would really like to get back on these but at the moment I am focusing my colour work on the Yule sweater um, but yeah I'm gonna pick those up again I think and uh, get them going so so they are all my whips that's it I've aired my dirty laundry um, and you've seen all of my knitting whips so it's not too bad um, however I do have plans so that brings me on to acquisitions. Okay, I made a purchase at Jameson Smith, again, because I'm a sucker for it, 
um, because I would like to make a tank top, a colour work, all over colour work tank top. And I know I haven't finished my Yorwe yet, but very soon I'm going to swatch for this. All right, is that all the colours? Now with this yarn, I'm intending to make the Roosty Tank, is it? Yes, the Roosty Tank Top by Ella Gordon, who's an amazing colour work designer. Um, and these are the colours that she used for that. I will pop another picture in. It is the most beautiful tank top. Um, and I feel that I need it in my life. So I have bought all the yarn for that tank top and I'll be swatching for that fairly soon, I think. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to have too much of a problem with gauge, um, but because it is all over colour work, I am going to swatch. Because I do tend to find that Jameson Smith, my gauge tends to be pretty much on the nail. Um, but again, it's a different designer, so I need to, yeah. Before I put all that effort into a big colour work project, I am going to swatch. Sometimes I do wing it a little bit um, with swatching, um, a bit like the Lana Vest. I didn't swatch for that. I have got gauge, um, but I tend to just knit a bit and I don't mind ripping stuff out. Um, but when it's colour work, yeah, I do swatch. So that is um, going to be swatched up soon. Um, what else have I got? Ah, a bit of crinkling, hold on. Sorry. So I was lucky enough to win a giveaway from Botanical Yarn um, last month. And this was a shawl kit for the Stephen West knit along that just happened. And I wanted to wait until the pattern came out to see if it was my thing, because sometimes they aren't. So I like to see the first couple of clues and see you know, if it's something I'd quite like to do. It wasn't. Um, yeah, for this yarn, I kind of was thinking something that's a bit more softer and a bit more of a gradient. So I'll show you the yarn. How beautiful and how lucky am I to receive that? It's absolutely gorgeous. So this, I think, was the, I want to say the hydrangea. Let me just check. I don't want to... Yeah. So it's the hydrangea gradient and it is absolutely beautiful but the shawl wasn't for me at all so I've kind of been keeping my eye out on what I'm going to make with this. Now I've noticed that, I'm going to put this down, Stephen West is bringing out his hibernate along um, and you see a picture of the whole shawl first of all, I, will, I again will pop a picture on the screen, that is the shawl. For this yarn so that is what I'm intending to make. Um, it is just absolutely stunning and I like the way it flows through the gradient a bit more. The knit along, I can't even remember what the one that he's just done was called but the stripiness of it, it, it kind of wasn't my thing. I wanted something a lot, um, a lot softer and a lot smoother. So I think the hyper knit along shawl could be the one for me. Um, am I going to start it Probably not, um, but that's the pattern that I think I'm going to do with that yarn. Um, but it's just beautiful. And thank you to the lovely girls at um, Botanical Yarn for um, sending that to me. And again, they have a lovely podcast, which I will link down below. Okay, what else? I bought a... I bought two skeins that I haven't actually got out, so bear with. There's always something you forget when you're going to do a podcast. Okay, so I had a little order with John Arben, and I ordered this gorgeous Appledore, which is absolutely stunning. So beautiful. So this yarn, I have a project in mind for. This is Appledore Billy Down Pippin, which I think they named them all after apples. And it's made of 40% Devon Close Wool, 40% Romney, and 20% Exmoor Blue Face. And it is a DK weight. And I just love it. And it just smells amazing. And it's got this beautiful halo as well. I don't know if you can see that. But I have plans for this. And I want to make the Scrumper Waistcoat by Marina Skewer. Um, because it is just gorgeous. However, I want to make 
Huh, don't sniff yarn, you get floof up your nose. But I want to make a crop version. So I have only got, have I got two or three? Can't remember. <laughs> I just grabbed these out. I think I might have only got two. Um, because I want to make it so that it sits literally at the narrowest part, so on my waist, because I want to wear it with dresses. Um, I might be playing yarn chicken, but I'm willing to give it a go. And if I need to, I will just get another one. So I ordered that. It's all about the teals, isn't it? The teal kind of rooster tea and this sort of tealy blue. It's kind of a bit of my jam at the moment. And while I was there, I wanted to try this, which is their Pure Elements. Um, which is just beautiful. And this is... Uh, a limited edition, it's called Frosted Dunes, it's 40% alpaca, 40% Exmoor Blueface, 20% Jacob, and it is just gorgeous. Love it. So I'm thinking that this will probably be a hat to go with my stripy shawl that I can't remember the name of. Um, let me have a look in my last notes. The Lang Air by Gudrun Johnson. Um, I'll pop a picture in. So yeah, so I'm thinking a hat um, to go with that because it's just beautiful. So I'm loving that. And I've just realised I've forgotten something else. Back in a minute. That's it. I don't think I have to leave you again. <laughs> um, Jack went up to... Whistlebear Farm a little while ago and he went with Ali from Ali in Sweatpants who again has a lovely podcast um, and Ali was over with her other half to visit the UK and she went to Ireland and Scotland, England and I think she went to Italy as well and um, you have to watch her podcast to um, have a look. Anyway Jack went up to Whistlebear Farm and with Ali and he bought me a skein of yarn back which is so so lovely and it is just so beautiful it's deeper than that it's it's um more purpley I mean that looks like bright pink it's not bright pink it's kind of yeah anyway so he bought me this and this is the Yeevering Bell four ply and it is called Slow Velvet and it is 80% mohair, 20% Wensleydale. Honestly, it's the softest, most beautiful yarn. And I'm thinking, I could make a beret or something with it, because it's so lovely. In fact, my lovely friend Gaynor from Tales from Cuckoo Land um, has been um, talking with me about a beret that she made recently. Is it the Bis Bis beret? So that might be quite nice. Yeah. It's lovely, absolutely gorgeous. So thank you, Jack, for that. Now, my last acquisition is one I haven't actually bought myself. Um, my lovely friend Lorraine, who is a natural dyer, um, who doesn't live too far from me, was talking to me about assigned pooling. And I hadn't really explored assigned pooling before. Um, and we were having a bit of a conversation, sort of just messaging each other about it. And... I sort of said to her that I kind of it was interesting I'd like to have a go and about talking about it on the podcast but I didn't know enough about it to kind of talk to you guys really so anyway she sent me the most beautiful yarn I've got two of them here which I think are the two that I'm going to use and I'm itching to cast this on but I wanted to show you in their skeins first so they are just the most beautiful colors everything's naturally dyed um, how she gets those colours, I have no idea because it's just genius, genius. So these are Wensleydale, I think they're both Wensleydale and I think they're both four ply. Oh no, this one's DK and this one is four ply. Um, so yeah, and she also gave me a green one so I'm going to have a little, little bit of a play and report back to Lorraine. So thank you Lorraine. Um, they are just absolutely beautiful and uh, looking forward to having a go with that. Okay, I think it's time 
to move on to the book section. So I have been, I've been reading quite a bit actually recently. I, um, what have I been reading? I've been listening to The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry and I absolutely loved that book. It was just so amazing. I listened to it on Audible and it's a it's a, I was going to say pattern, it's a story by Rachel Joyce and it was narrated by Jim Broadbent who has the most amazing voice. He did it so, so well and towards the end I was kind of just listening to like 10 minutes a night because I didn't want it to end. The story was just beautiful, it made me cry, it made me laugh um, and it was absolutely wonderful. And I know that um, she's also written one about Queenie Hennessy, who's one of the characters in the book. Um, but yeah, I, I felt quite bereft when it had finished. Um, yeah, just don't know what to say. It still kind of, yeah, melts my heart a little bit. So um, yeah, really, really, really enjoyed that. It was a great read. Um, the other one that I read recently was The Maid by Nita Prose. Uh, which is a, a bit of a kind of who done it, and it's centered around a maid who is, um, I think her name's Molly. I th is, it, is her name Molly? Yeah, her name's Molly, and I think she's uh, neurodiverse, and um, so there's bits of information that she kind of picks up on, um, and social cues that she doesn't, which I found really interesting because obviously I work a lot around neurodiversity. Um, but it was really good and I got to about 10 pages before the end and I thought well I know who it is I know what happened but I didn't know what happened so um yeah so I enjoyed that it was fun would I read it again no would I read The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harrow Fry again absolutely definitely but I wouldn't read this again however it was an interesting read and it was an enjoyable read so that was good um the other one that I'm reading two books I'm reading at the moment is I'm reading Mad Honey by Jodie Picou in collaboration with someone else that I can't think of and oh it's good it is so good um I haven't read a Jodie Picou book, book for quite some time but what I love about her is she takes quite controversial subjects and she turns them on their head and it is just genius she is such a clever writer so I don't want to give too much away about the story because when I found out what the story was really about it kind of I didn't see it coming and I don't want to spoil that for anybody who might be reading it um, but it's just getting to a point now kind of to the end of the trial the court case um, and which most of her books do they do have like a court element to them um, and so it's really hotting up so I'm loving that um, I'm about three quarters of the way through the other one that I am reading or listening to at the moment is How to Build a Boat by Elaine Feeney and it's narrated by Kieran O'Brien. Um, and he, again, has a lovely voice and a lovely Irish accent. So, um, it's yeah, I'm enjoying that. And again, about neurodiversity. Um, so, But I'm only a few chapters in, so I can't report back too much. And I can't really tell you what it's about because when I downloaded the book, I obviously read the blurb. But once it's on my Kindle, I, I forget what the book was even about. So I just start listening to it. So, <laughs> yeah. The last thing I wanted to share with you is the book that's next on my list or it's going to be coming up very very soon. So this is Murder on the Christmas Express by Alexandra Benedict and this was bought for me by my lovely dad last Christmas. Um, I saw it and I told him that I was really keen on it so um, he bought it for me and um, it's kind of obviously it's a murder it's set in the highlands I think um, but it's also got a lot of cryptic kind of clues in there. Um, so yeah, I really fancied that. So that is going to be, I think, my Vlogmas read. And I know a few of my knitting friends are possibly going to read along with me. So you might be seeing some other people reading this book next month. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. We've agreed, I think, that we're going to start it on December the 1st um, and then report back. So, um, and I love the, look at the end papers in this book. I mean, this is the hardback copy. Um, you can possibly get it. Um, in paperback now but um, yeah looking forward to reading that right I feel like I've been waffling on for a long old time so 
I haven't really got much else to report. I'm back at work after half term. Um, Jack's been down, so it's lovely having time with him. And yeah, just kind of um, knitting and clearing up the garden. Just the usual kind of stuff. But um, I thought you might like to see what's going on in my knitting world. Um, I have got some dishcloths on the loom at the moment in Vlogtober. Getting confused now between Vlogtober and Vlogmas. In Vlogtober, I did show you how I set up my rigid heddle loom and I'm making some dishcloths. So I have got that um, going on as well at the moment. But other than that, I think that's about it for me. So I will let you go. Um, please leave a comment if you'd like to um, yeah, talk to me about any projects you might be working on or any acquisitions that you're enjoying at the moment. Um, and are, are there any colour work options out there? You know, let me know if there's any more colour work projects that um, I need to take a look at. So anyway, waffly. I will see you in Vlogmas and um, thank you for watching and I will see you very soon. Take care.